So I don't know if you could tell by a lot of the videos that I've been doing lately, but I've just been on this kick of really helping people understand the importance of how they see themselves. Oh my goodness. I figured in this video, I would show you how to show up in that seven figure energy. Hey, hey, Courtney Sanders here. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new to me, I'm a full-time online life and business coach as well as wife and mom. I wear all the hats and do all the things. And I'm so excited because my business has been growing pretty steadily over the last few years. In fact, last year was my first seven figure year. This year will likely be a multi seven figure year or pretty close to it. And none of this would have happened had I not learned how to show up in confident energy. So I don't know if you could tell by a lot of the videos that I've been doing lately, but I've just been on this kick of really helping people understand the importance of how they see themselves oh my goodness your self image is everything if you see yourself as a nobody it's just a beginning you know low down little meager measly coach right i'm getting out of the frame <laughs> imagine how you look right when you were showing up online if that is your attitude you're really counting yourself out. And so because I've been talking a lot on this channel about the importance of confidence and believing yourself and showing up like the coach you want to be, even if you are not that coach yet, or regardless, even if you're not a coach, if you're just an industry expert or a consultant or a personal brand, showing up as the entrepreneur that you want to be, I figured in this video, I would show you how to show up in that seven figure energy. And I will say, this is something that I have done from the beginning. Like even when I had no money, no followers, I was still showing up to the best of my ability as what I imagined a seven figure coach to be. And it's just been really amazing to watch my reality catch up to that self image. So if you're like, okay, I am ready to show up as my best self. You're going to love this video because I'm going to get into it right now. All right. So if you want to consistently show up in seven figure energy, or maybe your belief isn't even there yet, maybe you're like, if I could just show up in six figure energy, that would be great. But if you want to show up as that bigger name, the first thing that you need to do is create an affirming environment. In fact, I'm like, if you don't take any other tip from this video, definitely take this one because so often we look at our circumstances, we look at our day to day environment and we subtly start to see ourselves according to that environment. And so I've been really good at this from the very beginning. It didn't matter what my circumstances look like. I always made sure to kind of engineer my environment to affirm that identity that I was building for myself as a successful coach, as a world renowned coach, as someone, you know, who would be reaching people all over the globe. Even when I wasn't doing those things, I created an environment that made it easier to believe that I could become that person. And so again, I say this as someone who started her coaching business fresh out of college. I was living in a one bedroom apartment that barely had any furniture. Again, I didn't have a coaching certification. I didn't have anything, but I knew that one day I could be at this level. And so I was very diligent about putting myself in environments that made me feel like, wow, I really could be this person. One story that I talk about all the time is when I was working in Dallas, Texas, there's a hotel, I believe it's still there. It's called the Jewel. I love the Jewel Hotel. It's really amazing. But I used to work downtown in my corporate job and the Jewel Hotel was maybe like four or five blocks away. And so on my lunch break, I would take my personal laptop and I would walk to the Jewel Hotel. It was like a five or 10 minute walk. And I would just sit there in the lobby and just work on my business. So, you know, it took me 10 minutes to work, the, uh, to walk there and then 10 minutes to walk back. So I only had 40 minutes to work, but I would maybe order like a croissant or some coffee. Sometimes I would heat my lunch up at work and like bring it with me in my bag and like kind of sneak and eat it in the uh, lobby. I know that's kind of tacky, but yeah, I would heat up my lunch at work and then eat it in the lobby of the Jewel Hotel while I was working on my business. But I did that because I just wanted to be in the environment that made me feel like success. Now understand this is going to be different from other people. Hopefully by now y'all know that I'm a little fancy. Your girl's a little bougie, right? I like, I like a nice hotel. I like nice things. That's something that I'm just really unapologetic about, but those environments make me feel like, ah, I am showing up as my best self. Maybe for you, you're like a super outdoorsy person and you know, wide open spaces make you feel completely expanded. And you're like, yes, I am doing everything that I can be created to be when I am out in the mountains or I'm overlooking the ocean. If that's the case for you, then make sure that you are putting yourself in those environments. So you don't necessarily need to be in the environments that I like to put myself in, but whatever those environments are that make you feel like 
that coach, right? That make you feel like that entrepreneur, like you are your biggest and best self. Make sure that you are regularly putting yourselves in those environments because it makes it that much easier for you to show up online. Again, I know what it's like to be in an empty one bedroom apartment, to have your camera set up and you're going off and talking about everything that, you know, your clients or your prospective clients need to do. And you're giving strategies and advice. And you have that little voice in the back of your head. That's like, you're an imposter. What makes you think that you could do this? Look at this. You're in a one bedroom apartment with no furniture, you can't even afford a real camera, you got your phone up here. Again, if you don't strategically put yourself in environments that negates those imposter syndrome thoughts, it's gonna be that much more difficult for you to show up with confidence. So make sure that you are creating environments for yourself that affirm the person that you want to be, not really take away from it. And also, you can do this even in your day-to-day -day life by re-engineering how you see things. So I know for me, on the days that I would drive to work, and so fun fact, I actually opted for the bus pass to get to work every day because because I wanted to work on my business on my laptop while we were riding to work. And so obviously I can't do that if I'm driving, but I liked being on the bus. I could fire up my laptop, have the hotspot on my phone and just work. But sometimes I was a little late in the morning and so I wasn't gonna be able to catch the bus and I knew that I had to drive in. And so on the days that I had to drive into work, I literally would like brainwash myself and make believe that I was not driving to work per se, but I was driving to my highest paying client. And so I was going downtown to have a meeting with my client and to do the work that they wanted me to do. And then after uh, my day of working with my client was over, I get to go back home and continue to work on my business. So even in my mind, I re-engineered my existing environment to be something where I wasn't seeing myself as, oh, I'm a nine to five worker, but I saw myself as an entrepreneur even back then. And I just told myself, hey, I'm just driving to my client. So I, I cannot stress this enough. It's the first point because it's the most important, but you really wanna create an environment that really affirms the type of person that you want to be because it makes all the difference in how you show up. All right, the next thing you need to do, which is kind of aligned with the first point, is that you need to focus more on your story than you do your circumstances. Really, I feel like these two points go hand in hand. So again, just like I mentioned, it's easy to have that imposter syndrome when you're looking at your circumstances, you're looking at how much money is in your bank account, what you do or don't have. It's easy to feel down on yourself and feel like you're being an imposter because look at what you don't have. But for me, I would look at what I don't have and see that that was natural and normal because that was just the point that I was in in the story. And so in my mind, I almost had this kind of like running um, movie playing in my mind where I was the main character and you know I was this young girl that was on her way to build a successful business and you know a few scenes down the road it was gonna be a big success and so I know that sounds silly but it makes all the difference because I no longer felt bad around my current situation oftentimes when we want to be the successful entrepreneur and we look at all the ways practically in our lives that we aren't that person it's really easy to get down in ourselves but if we just see that it's like oh no I'm just at that point in the movie right that's just the scene before I have the big breakthrough and I'm on stage you know to adoring fans you know talking about my life story if you see it as that scene before you get to the good stuff you don't feel so bad about it because you know that you are on the right track and so I really focused on the story that I was creating for myself and I would get really excited when I got further along in my process because this, again this little movie that was playing in my head I was like wow I'm getting closer to ultimately where I want it to be so there was no need to feel ashamed around where I was because that was just a scene in the story that I happened to be in all right, the next thing that you'll want to do that really helps you show up in your seven figure energy is reconnect with why you were born for this, right? And if you don't believe that you were born for this, that's part of the problem. I'll just say that right then and there. That is part of the problem. Now I have plenty of ranty videos on this channel where I talk about how it's not enough where you want to just quit your job. No one cares that you want to quit your job, right? People not only want, you know, someone who's really good at what they do and can help them, but people want people who are confident and who really feel like they are operating in their purpose. Like it just comes across so much differently than someone who is just starting a business because they hate their job and they want to make money. So if you don't believe that you were born for this, I would say that that's a red flag and you really need to go back to the drawing board and reconnect with what you do feel that you were born for. But if you want to get into this line of work because you know that there's a, a calling to this and you want to share that gift with the world, you need to be affirming that to yourself every day. And so I've known from a very young age that I was going to be in some sort of 
teaching coaching capacity. I mean, I was the girl in high school who was like standing up on the lunch table telling everybody why they needed to stop gossiping and they needed to stop starting fights and don't you understand that you're made for more and you have such a great potential and our lives are amazing and come on everybody get it together. Like I was that person. I remember speaking about not looking at your circumstances and looking at your story, which was the previous step. I remember when I was broke in college and I was working multiple jobs and I was waiting tables. And I remember coaching the other waiters. A lot of them were like much older than me. And I would ask them all these deep probing questions around, you know, what are you here for? What do you really want to do with your life? I know you're working, you know, this job waiting tables, but like, what's your real goal? And they would tell me like, oh man, I really want to get into the music industry. I'm just doing this for a few months in order to save up money. And I would, you know, encourage them. And I would do so much coaching on the job, even though I had no business coaching them because one, I was in my twenties, I was struggling trying to finish, you know, my degree and save up money and get out of debt and do all the things myself, but I couldn't not do it because it's just what I do. Like, this is just my gift. It's just, it's just what I do. It's just what I'm here for. So I always connect with that feeling of like, wow, I was really made to do this. Like, this is my actual gift. I'm really born for this. And that really helps me show up in that seven figure energy because whether I got seven figures in the bank or not, I know that I was made for this. All right, I have more where that came from, but first I wanna hear from you. What are some stuff that you're taking to show up in confidence? Share in the comments below. All right, the next thing that you'll wanna do, and not enough people do this, and this hurts them, not just in their business, but even in their careers, if they're looking for promotions, et cetera, et cetera, is normalizing major money. Now, so many people have these ideas in their heads of what is a lot of money. And so they devalue themselves when it comes to being a coach or even creating products and services because they're like, that's a lot of money. But what they think is a lot of money is only in relation to the money that they're presently making. They don't realize that what might be a lot of money to you right now is actually not a lot of money to somebody else. And it actually might not be a lot of money in the grand scheme of things. Even though I'm very proud of where I am in business and where I'm growing, I'm hyper aware that at the end of the day, a million dollars is not that much money, right? Again, I'm great that I had my first million dollar year. You know, I would love to get to the place where we're having million dollar months, but I know that there are companies out there who are making a million dollars like an hour, right? A million dollars a day in the grand scheme of things. When you think about how much money is flowing around in the world, a million dollars really isn't that much money. And so why I say you want to normalize big money is because you really want to dethrone this idea that like, oh, that's so much money. I could never get there. And it gives you confidence. One, not only to show up and to say your prices, but to be around people who can afford to pay those prices. And so that's a whole nother thing. I feel like I have to make another video or maybe I'll even um, talk about that elsewhere on my podcast or on my Instagram. So make sure that you are following me on those other channels. But oftentimes while we have difficulty attracting people who can't afford to pay those prices is because we don't know why someone would even want to pay those prices in the first place. In fact, we don't even know people who value these types of services at that level and who are spending money at that level. And so because we're surrounded with people who don't value what it is that we do or who don't spend that type of money or invest that type of money in these arenas, we kind of have this fishbowl syndrome where we think that our immediate circle is the world and that's not the case. It's not the world. So you definitely want to get out. You definitely want to network in different circles, network with successful people, network with people who invest in themselves, who invest in their business, people who are focused on making money and who have financial resources because you start to understand the mindset that they have and you start to understand that money is actually not the most important thing for them. Oftentimes time is the most important thing. And so if you can save them time, they will gladly pay the money. But a lot of people don't even realize that because they're not connected to people who have big money, right? So you want to get around these circles. You want to get in these environments because it helps you normalize quote unquote major money and you stop making it such a big thing and you can show up in confidence in any room that you're in. All right. The next thing that you'll want to do in order to show up in seven figure energy or six figure energy or whatever as a coach is you want to hold yourself in high regard. And I'm just amazed at how many people don't do this and understand when I am saying, hold yourself in high regard. I am not talking about being haughty or believing that you are like better than other people or like nose in the air. I don't mean that at all, but I do mean honoring yourself and believing that you have worth and not putting yourself in positions where you make yourself look bad. In fact, um, I had a friend who sent me an article. I feel like I mentioned this in a different video or a different podcast 
podcast, but she sent me an article that was making the rounds on LinkedIn from someone who was essentially venting about the fact that they couldn't get a job. You know, they had unfortunately gotten laid off from their job and they were lamenting about how difficult it was to find a job and how these hiring managers are terrible and they're doing these job postings, but they're really just, you know, hiring internally and the ATS system is stupid. And I did, you know, 2000 job, um, uh, postings, or I submitted my resume to, to 2000 different job postings and no one has called me back. And I know that the person did this because they were looking for like, I don't know, moral support from strangers on the internet. They were hoping that other people um, on LinkedIn would like rally behind them and type in the comments and say, yeah, you're right. This job market is terrible, da, 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 whatever. But what that person didn't realize is by posting something like that about themselves, they were not holding themselves in high regard. Why on earth would you ever post something that makes you look bad? Why would you ever post something that paints you in a bad light? And in fact, what that person didn't realize that they were doing is they were essentially saying, I've been passed over by this many companies. These many companies have either reviewed my resume and found me lacking or haven't even found what I put on my resume worth the time to consider. I am having such difficulty because at the end of the day, people do not find my skill set valuable. Like, I know they don't think that that's what they were doing, but by advertising that to the world, that's essentially what they were saying. And that's essentially the light that they were casting on themselves. And so I find that people do not hold themselves in high regard. I think part of it is a social media, you know, era where we're just used to just saying anything and just airing our dirty laundry out and just putting anything out on the internet. And there's no care to how am I going to be perceived? How can I protect my image? And how can I make sure that, you know, I hold myself in such high regard that I'm never going to put anything out that damages me or damages my prospects or damages my own reputation. And so holding yourself in seven figure energy as a coach is being mindful of that and not doing anything that's going to cast a negative light. So, you know, from a business context, if you're not getting that many clients right now and you're working and figuring it out and figuring out the best way to market your business, that's not the time to post on social media about how all these clients are broke and people need to stop getting on your calls, talking about they can't afford it. And if you can't afford it, don't sign up for my coaching. And you know, you hear, you see all these like snarky posts that people do where they think they're being funny and they think that they're rallying support and they think that they're telling people off, but what they don't realize is that they're actually painting themselves in a negative light. And why on earth would you ever do that to your yourself, have some decorum about yourself and, and have some, some, some confidence, right? Honor yourself. Think that you are worthy, have some self-worth literally, and have some boundaries and some lines in the sand where you're like, even if I am dealing with things behind the scenes, I'm not going to put myself out there like that because I value myself too much. All right. I hope this was helpful. If you have six or even seven figure aspirations, then you absolutely need to be in my signature program, the next big name boot camp. We show you how to not only hold the energy, but how to build a brand that will allow you to show up in the energy as a six or even seven figure coach. So if you're curious about that, you can click the link below to apply. And if we think you're a good fit, we will invite you to a call with my enrollment coordinators and talk about next steps to get you enrolled in the program. All right. Thanks so much for watching this video. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And if you can't wait for my next video, make sure that you are subscribed to my podcast, the Courtney Sanders show on both iTunes and Spotify. And if you can't wait for my next podcast episode or my next YouTube video, make sure you are following me on Instagram. That's Courtney L Sanders on Instagram. And with that, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.